Good day there. You're watching the Aussie Beam Guru, and we're looking at lesson four from my Learn Dynamo series, and we're going to do a demonstration to lead on from my tutorial on list creation and management. So we're going to demonstrate basically uh, a cipher or a decoding script uh, to use in cryptography um, to basically uh, encode letters into numbers and recode those numbers back into letters to pass messages. Um, and whilst it may not be directly related to architecture, I find that I often will have to process certain types of data in a similar manner to how this script will work. Um, say you've got a table of data and a table of elements and you're trying to align the two in order to get those two data tables to work, to work together or talk to each other or pass data between them. So we're going to create like a cipher function, um, apply it to, to a, a message and then un uncode the element uh, from there using a, a decoding script. So we'll go straight to Dynamo and we'll make sure to use a lot of list techniques along the way. That's really the point of this um, this tutorial and also to show you some things we've learned in the last few sessions as well. So we're, we're gonna create a range, uh, basically from uh, A through to Z and we'll make that 26 characters long. So step of one. And we're also gonna add a space to the end as well. So we'll just do a code block for this, just in apostrophes, and we'll add item to end. So basically we're gonna add that to our list. So at that point, we basically have an alphabetical list with a space on the end. So that's our, that's our letters. Um, but from there, we wanna build a numerical sequence to work with as well. So we're gonna work um, from, we'll go from 10 to 37. So essentially, actually we'll go from, 11 to 37. So essentially we're offsetting a range of one through to 26 um, by 10 and then we're adding one uh, because basically the last character will always be a space. So that's pretty much the foundation for beginning this script. If we wanted to be clever we could look at reversing the order as well. Um, at the moment it looks like index 27 is coming out as empty so I might just cross check that that's working ah because of course we're adding an item to the end which we don't want to do in this case okay so we could go very simply with the sequence here and say that each of these lines up to the number however maybe we'll re re reverse the order just to make someone have to think a bit harder when they unwind this script okay there we go so basically at the moment we understand that if we see uh an 11 it's a space and otherwise, this is basically A through to Z. So we're gonna make a message as a string. And just pop that out. This is our message. Obviously, you can't do apostrophes unless you include those in the code book. Um, so at the moment, we're gonna basically break this into a list. Um, so we're gonna do string to list. And this comes from the Archilab package, I believe. Uh, actually from Zebra, sorry. So we can take this string and process it out as a list. And you can see that it breaks it into individual elements. And we can, we can basically find the index of each of those. So from our list of letters, where does each of these sit as an index? And there you go. These are the numerical occurrence indexes of each of those letters. So for example, index 19 should be T, which it is. So this is basically a numerical encoding from here. But what we wanna do is get the index of each of those respective elements in this list. So we're gonna do get item at index. Okay, so from, from this list, we're gonna get the indexes of those occurrences. There we go. And at that point, we can basically concatenate all of those together. String oh, integers. So we need to process those into strings as well. String from object. And we're going to process those into strings. So at that point, that would be our message. So what we're going to do now is actually break this back up into data from here. So this would be our message at this point, but what we wanna do is unwind this back into an actual discernible message on the other side as well. So we're gonna do a, a string to list again on this side. 
And at that point, you can see we've broken everything down into individual characters. But what we really want to do is break these into uh, breaks of two. So I'm going to flatten this list just to get this down to one level. And then we're going to chop the list as well. You recall we showed list chop in the last tutorial. So basically list chop will break the list into portions. We're going to break it into portions of two. Great. And what we want to do is basically concatenate all of these sub lists uh, into single lists each so that we can make them numbers. So we're going to have to do a list map to achieve this. So we're going to map the function concatenate onto each of these sub lists using uh, concatenate. And what this should do is break them down into numbers respectively. And at that point, we can flatten again, just so that we've got a single list of numbers. Okay, so what we have at this point is basically what we had at this point. So that's what we had to do to unwind the concatenate. So the list map was the key there in order to consolidate those numbers. So at that point, we need to reverse engineer and find out what indexes these were generated from. So what we're gonna need to do is have a copy of this range on our side as well. So the user would need in their decoding script, this range in order to get the indexes of each of these. So again, they would need to run an index of, and in that list, they would need to find where these indexes occur. But you'll notice here we have different data types. So here we have a number range, but here we have strings. So what we have to do is actually convert this to number. There we go. And we'll get the indexes of, and that's the indexes respectively of what we had before. So you recall when we got to this point, they were the indexes that we had at that point. So it's important to make sure that you convert strings to numbers and numbers to strings when you're working with lists of them. Otherwise the data won't correspond. So if I go straight there, obviously there's no occurrence of a string in a numerical range. So that's really important. But you can see there the index of enables us to get back to that point. And what the user would also need at that point is a copy of this list as well as part of their uh, decoding because basically they're gonna do a get item at index from that side of the code. But this would prevent someone from essentially being able to understand any messages they come across without these components. So we would basically say we wanna get things at this index from that list, and there's our message. And as you can guess, the last thing that we need to do is concatenate our message together. And there you go, our message comes through the other side. And obviously because this is coding and it's dynamic, um, this is another message. And you would expect that would go in, be converted into a code, come out here, get flattened, chopped by two, maps, reflattened, uh, processed to numbers, index checked against our numerical sequence, uh, obtained from our alpha sequence, and there you go, our messages come out the other side as well. So this is a really good technique to practice um, in order to understand just how to process data through lists. Um, the main nodes that we're really taking advantage of in this process are get item at index, index of, and also the list map is quite critical as well. The list map and chop and the concatenate. So this is just a good way to understand how to process numerical and alpha data in two directions. Um, so feel free to practice this before you move on to the next session. Um, you can follow along if you like with this one as well. Um, my, dy my Dynamo version, if you're looking to follow along, is just here, um, if you're looking to replicate what I've done. So hopefully that sort of helps um, better understand how to process lists. If you have any questions, um, feel free to consult the primer or the forums, um, or feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions, and I'm always happy to answer. Um, feel free to join me in the next lesson, which deals with code blocks and design scripts. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you on the next lesson. Thanks. Take care. Bye.